It's not only easy to learn data structures and algorithms. In fact, it's very easy to learn data structures and algorithms. Hello friends, how are you doing today? I wish and pray that all of you are good and doing well. Welcome to this video where I'm going to talk about data structures and algorithms as well as big O notations. These are the topics which must be known to each and every software developers, programmers or computer science students because these are the basic building blocks of any code you write, any software you create. And I'm going to tell you this without using any laptop or showing you any boring code. So hang on with me till the end to understand data structures, algorithms and big O notations. Now before I start, I want to tell you why I think that these are the building blocks and extremely important topics. You know guys, you can create software in many programming languages and you can use any data structure you want. So what is the difference between software you create and the software created by your competitors? The difference is how fast your software works, how efficient it is and what is the response time your software gives as compared to your competitor and all these things will be determined by the kind of data structures and algorithms you use to write your software and that's the precise reason it is extremely extremely important. So let's start with data structures first. So what are data structures by the way? Well, we always consider data structure as something which belongs to computer science. That's not correct. All of you might have been to a library, right? And that library may be having hundreds and thousands of books. How will you search the book which you want to read? Will you look into each and every book? No, right? Because the books are arranged in such a way where it is easy for you to find your desired book. Talk about Amazon or Netflix. You do not go ahead and look into all the titles or all the products before buying something in Amazon or watching a movie in Netflix because things are arranged in a better way like genre based, language based. So it is easy for you to search. Talk about your home. If I ask you or let's assume that your parents or your friends ask you to wear new clothes in the evening. What will you do? You will not go ahead and look into each and every corner of your house before finding new clothes because you know that your new clothes are there in one closet at some location, maybe in your room, right? We are programmed by nature to keep things in an arranged way. And why we want to keep things in an arranged way? Because we should not spend more time in finding the stuff, right? And this arrangement is called data structure. Data structure is nothing but an accurate arrangement. Why we keep things in an arranged way? So that we do not spend more time in finding the items which we want to find. These two things tells us what is data structure. Data structure is an accurate arrangement where it is easy to find as well as retrieve desired items. That's all about data structure and data structure is part and parcel of our daily lives. We don't do anything in our daily lives without involving data structures or algorithms. We do it all the time. We use it all the time. So data structures and algorithms in your computer program or in your software is not different from the data structure what you are using or doing in your day-to-day -day life. So in your software code, you arrange your data which is scattered throughout in a way where it is easy to store as well as retrieve the data when it is needed. If you do not arrange the data and if you keep the data in a random way, of course your program will take hell lot of time to find the desired data. That's the reason you arrange your data in linked list, array, trees, graph or name anything, any other data structure. You arrange it so that it's easy for you to find or store new element in the data. So next time if someone talks to you about data structure 
always remember it is not exclusive to your program or code we are by nature programmed to use data structures in our day to day lives now i talked about data structure you will ask me a question what is algorithm good question uh, let's assume that you know my mother comes to my room and she is upset by seeing the way things are arranged in my room she took everything out and put it on a table and asked me to you know arrange the things in a proper way better way i believe most of us might have been through this situation because our mothers tend to like you know our room to be clean our books to be arranged so what will i do once my mother dump everything onto the table i will try to come up with things like um, you know uh, well if i am using these steps more i will keep it in this position if i am not using these steps on a regular basis i may put it in some drawer all those things we will do these things are called algorithms so if you want to store something in sorted order sorting algorithm right so an algorithm it's something which helps you to keep your data structure intact i will repeat it again an algorithm is something which helps you to keep your data structure intact assume a new product comes into you know amazon marketplace or a new movie comes to netflix it will be arranged in its desired place right it will not be lying around somewhere where nobody can find it it also becomes the part and parcel of existing arrangement which is done to make sure that it is easy for anyone to find the stuff okay so this is what algorithm means i hope the idea of data structures and algorithms are clear i am going to tell you now the meaning of big o notation and what it looks like and what is the exact meaning of this so let's start with o1 which is also called constant time notation this means that no matter how the environmental factor changes it will always take you same amount of time to access a data or to do something with a data let me tell you a very simple example if you go to anyone's house you will realize that you will always take constant time to reach someone's kitchen or someone's living room irrespective of number of bedrooms in that apartment or that house whether it is one bedroom two bedroom three four five six or even seven or 10 bedroom apartment or house you will always take same amount of time to reach the living room or kitchen this is called constant time complexity no matter how big the house is you will always take same amount of time to reach living room or kitchen in the terms of computer science we can think of an array right so arrays are you know stored together in a memory so if you find the head of the array it's as good as finding anything in that array or even from the tail of the array so accessing something from an array is a constant time complexity this is represented by o1 i hope you understand what is the meaning of constant time complexity now the second complexity we will talk about is o n n is number of items so let's assume that we went to a store to buy a t-shirt and we went to a rack which had 20 t-shirts and we are damn sure that we are going to buy one of these 20 and you started from left and till you go to the right there are 20 t-shirts so at the worst case what will happen is that you will uh, choose the 20th t-shirt the last t-shirt okay so there are 20 t-shirts you looked into all the 20 t-shirts before buying one okay that's why all these complexities are called worst case complexities this means that there are 20 t-shirts at the worst you will have to see all 20 t-shirts before buying one but it is also likely that you may like third one seventh one or tenth one eleventh one you may not look into all the 20 but that 20 is the worst case the complexity will still be o n but these represent the worst case 
the worst case you will have to see all the items but there are chances that you can find it before you have to look into all the items this is o n complexity i hope it is clear right so if you have n items and if you have to look worst case all of them like you have an array uh, which is not sorted and you want to find one element at the worst you will find that element in the bottom of the array but you may also find first element or third element which is your desired element okay now the third complexity we will talk about o n square n square means if you have 10 elements you will do 100 comparisons if you have three elements you will do nine comparisons let's assume that you have three shirts with you and you got three pants now you want to match each shirt with the three pants and you are not removing any pant because it's highly likely that more than one shirt might match to a single pant so there are three shirts three pants so you took your first shirt compare with all three number of comparisons three you took your second shirt and again compared with all three number of comparisons become six you took your third shirt and again compare with all three number of comparisons become nine o n square three shirt three pant n square means total number of comparison is nine and that's n square complexity again that's the worst case complexity because it is likely that when you took the first shirt and when you are doing your first comparison you will like it you will not compare rest of the two that is possible but again that's why we say that o n square worst case complexity there is something similar called n into m so if number of pants are less number of shirts are three number of pants are two o n into m 3 into 2 equal to six comparison so one shirt compare with two pant second shirt compare with two pant third shirt compare with two pant total six comparison this is called o n into m now let's talk about one of the most important uh, algorithmic complexity called logarithmic so if you remember from maths the base ten log is 1 log 100 is 2 log 1000 is 3 which means that as the number of item grows your comparison doesn't grows that much so if you have a 10 page dictionary you will take one or two step to find your own word if you have 100 page dictionary you will take you know 3 to 4 steps to find your word if you have 1000 page dictionary you will take 5 to 6 step to find your desired word this is called logarithmic complexity imagine you are going to a small provision store if you buy from a small provision store and if you take 10 minutes to buy from a small provision store but if you go to a big supermarket uh, which is 10 times bigger than the small provision store but you take just you know 5 minutes more than the small provision store this is called logarithmic complexity same thing if you want to buy your shirt from a small uh, store or you buy it from a very big store the time taken will not be directly proportional to the size of store this is logarithmic complexity i hope you understand this now now the last complexity about which i am going to talk about is n log m so n is the number of items and for every n i have to do logarithmic complexity again let's go back to our shirts example we have three shirts with us and we want to buy matching pants and we go to a very big store so for each shirt we will be doing logarithmic search so in the store if it has let's say hundreds of pants we will be um doing two three four comparison to find the matching pant same thing for second shirt same thing for third shirt so we are not matching my shirt with each and every pants that are available in the store and that's why it's logarithmic matching for each n and that's why these kind of complexities are called n log n okay so first n is number of shirts second n is n is number of pants now in many of my examples i talked about first n as you know shirts second n as pants in computer science when you are writing your code it may highly likely that 
you will be end up comparing the same n. n represents same type of data, not the different type of data. But the intention, idea and the complexity remains same. So I hope I was able to explain you the concepts and idea of data structures, algorithms as well as big O notations in the easiest possible way. Thanks a lot people. Thanks for watching. Till the next time we meet. Good day. Goodbye. Take care.